Okay, welcome everyone to the launch of issue three of Youth and I. Um, what an incredible achievement to publish another edition of this wonderful series out into the world. Um, I'm calling in tonight from Ngunnawal country, otherwise known as Canberra, Australia. Um, Darawa Nuna, Darawa Ngunnawal, Ningada Dindi, Dararu Ngunnawulgun, Yinjamara Lejinin. This is Ngunnawal country. We always pay respect to elders, female and male, and Ngunnawal country. In addition, I'd like to acknowledge the numerous intersex First Nations people that live and have always lived on this land, um, and also acknowledge that land in Australia has never been ceded. Here we live on stolen land um, and are yet to have a treaty with our First Nations people here. My name is Steph Lum. I'm an intersex advocate poet and legal researcher. I'm the founder and editor of Editor-in-Chief of Youth and I, which began with its first issue in 2019. Gabriel Philpy, our front cover designer for this issue, is also joining us tonight from Ngunnawal land. And Youth and I's incredible graphic designer, Gaby Niemeyer, is joining us from Nam, Wurundjeri country, otherwise known as Melbourne. And as our stakeholder manager, Georgia Andrews, is joining us from Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. And we also have here a number of contributors and supporters to issue three. So for our launch event today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about uh, this issue and youth and I more broadly. And then I'll introduce some of our fantastic contributors to read their pieces. And then we'll close with a few words from some of the youth and I team. So for this issue, we are pre-recording and sharing it later um, when the book itself will be available. So when you're tuning into this, you'll be able to access issue three at youthani.org forward slash shop, and you'll be able to download a PDF copy there um, and order an imprint book. Or alternatively, you can access individual entries um, at youthani.org forward slash current dash issue. Uh, these links will be shared along with the recording as well. So Youth and I is a publication which shares the works of young intersex people. Broadly, this is aged 30 years and younger, though we are a bit flexible. Um, and it shares young intersex people's writings, poetry, drawings, and other artwork. Um, so this publication is really a first of its kind, and it's so valuable uh, in helping to share the stories of intersex people around the world, but importantly, in ways that they want to share them. So we work closely with the contributors to make sure that what is published is what they want. The philosophy behind Youth and I is really about working with intersex people to uplift and provide platforms for intersex people. And we do this in multiple ways. Firstly, by accepting submissions from around the world and translating pieces in languages other than English so that we can try and find as many people as possible including intersex individuals who may be more marginalized from a broader intersex movement, which is mostly conducted in English. We also work as a team of intersex people at Youth and I, and I hope over time we can continue to work with intersex editors, graphic designers and translators to continue to build connections within the community um, and also upskill intersex people while also producing positive and worthwhile projects like this one. So the theme for this issue is connection. Um, thank you, Jojo. Ah, read my mind. Um, I'm just going to quickly uh, share a quote from the forward, a bit about what this theme uh, means. We live in societies that are still so far from understanding what it means to have a variation in sex characteristics, let alone accept and celebrate our variations. In this isolation and uncertainty, what does it mean for us to live with and love our bodies and ourselves? How do we even begin to find and connect with other people when we are often disconnected from the language to even know other people like us exist? And when we are often told, explicitly or implicitly, never to talk about our own experiences? In issue three, we explore what finding and making connection means for us, both disconnection with ourselves and finding connection with families, friends, and an intersex community. So the diversity of pieces included in this issue, I think really reflect the challenges and joys 
uh, in finding meaningful and supportive connections that can help us heal and grow. And we'll hear some of these shortly. Um, but before I pass on to our contributors, I'd like to quickly thank our translators who have helped us include more pieces from more intersex people. For this issue, um, they included Laura Inter, Frey, Ronnie Zuse, Amy Oviera, and Aud Nasser. And we're also incredibly thankful for Intersex Human Rights Australia for funding this project, which makes it possible for us to pay our contributors, um, our translators, and also our graphic designer. So now we're gonna hear from some of the intersex contributors themselves. Um, and firstly, we have Irene. Irene is a 29 year old from Ukraine and Russia who is currently living in Berlin, Germany. Irene is a proud intersex person and activist and has been active in the movement since 2015. Irene works as a capacity and community building officer for OII Europe and is also a co-founder of Intersex Russia, OII Russia and a member of Interact Youth. Thank you so much, Steph. Thank you so much, everyone, for having me. It's a big honor and also an amazing pleasure. And yes, yeah, so happy to be here with all of you today. I am going to read my submission, which is called Riding the Wave. All my life, I felt disconnected from my intersex body. I could never wear my dream clothes because I didn't have the body for those clothes. And all my dream dresses had too much space for breasts for me to even think about trying them on. Regarding any physical activity, my attitude was always, there is no point in even trying. I knew I was and would be bad at all of it. Riding a bike, riding a scooter, roller skating, ice skating, taking PE classes, trying any kind of sports or dance class. I was always weak and clumsy and worse than everybody else. So I just avoided those things as much as I could. I had some health problems with my spine. No idea if they were or are related to my lower bone density at the time, which made me quit uh, ballet classes at which I wasn't that good anyway and allowed me to skip PE classes in high school. I hated my body so much and never wanted to be seen by anyone changing in a changing room or attempting any kind of physical activity. As a teenager, I filled the pages of my diary with words of pain, self-hatred, suicide, and self-harm. I still have the diary and I feel sad reading it now. The only thing that I was always comfortable and confident doing was swimming sea, ocean, pool, lake. I love water and I love swimming. I never even cared about how good my technique was. I just enjoyed the process. Even after discovering that I'm intersex, it took me a long time to feel better about my body. Weirdly, what kickstarted my self-acceptance was COVID. While self-isolating for two years, I really indulged myself in ordering food, enjoying my Big Macs, sushi, and pizzas. All my life I've been underweight, but during the pandemic I gained over 10 kilos. Honestly, it felt really good and I started feeling great about my hips and my new hourglass figure. At the same time, I discovered several amazing YouTubers and bloggers speaking out about their small boobs and accepting their bodies. This was life-changing. For the first time in my life, I could think of my body type as being represented, existing out there, being normal, being beautiful, and importantly, being sexy. In the past, I felt alone in my experience of not being able to grow breasts, even after many years on HRT, hormone replacement therapy, even in the intersex community. It took a while, but now in 2022, I can finally say that I am in love with my body and everything about it. I finally see myself as hot and sexy and I wear the clothes I always dreamt of wearing. In the past, I could never imagine getting here. I love my small breasts, they are perfect. I am so lucky to live in my body. This summer, I was on vacation in Nazaré, Portugal, a place with the highest waves in Europe. 
It has a surfing school. Learning to surf was something I always dreamt of, but never saw myself ever actually doing it. Me doing something physical with other people seeing me, never. But encouraged by fear of missing out and the enthusiastic support of my friends, I decided to try and go for it. It took me several days to gather the courage to even go and make an appointment for my surfing lesson, but eventually I did. The next day when I was going to my lesson, I was freaking out almost as much as I was when I was defending my university diploma and being interviewed for my current job. I was so scared. The idea of even trying this seemed ridiculous to me, but I still made myself do it. My instructor was an absolute sweetheart who was so helpful. And once we were in the water, I was in my own element. Water is where I feel confident, comfortable, in control. 90% of the time I was able to stand up on the surfboard and my instructor said that, especially for the first lesson, I was doing great. I was by no means perfect and I needed a lot of guidance on maintaining the balance on the board, adjusting speed and direction. But now I know what it feels like to ride the wave. This may sound silly, but for me trying this and actually succeeding is so huge. I could never imagine I would have the courage to do this. I was only able to have the courage to try this after years of being in the community, going to therapy and taking antidepressants. Before now, I would have never dared to even think of doing it. The day after the lesson and for days after, all my muscles and joints hurt so much. I'm almost 30, LOL, but it felt so gratifying. I was so happy and I could never imagine I would get here. Feeling sexy, feeling confident, trying surfing and actually riding the wave. It was a dream come true and definitely one of the best experiences of my life. I never dreamt or imagined I would get here and be so comfortable with myself, my body, my existence. When I read my teenage diary now, I wish I could tell the teenage me that it does get better that it gets better beyond your wildest dreams and imagination. You will love your body and you will serve the wave, wave teenage Irene. I know, I've done it, you've done it. We did it together. Thank you so much. Yay, thank you, Irene. I really love what a positive story you shared with us. It's just so nice to see your growth, um, you know, within yourself and how you experience different kinds of joy with your body and yourself. So thank you for sharing this with us. Uh, next up, we have Free. Um, thank you for joining us, Free. Free is from Mexico um, and has a degree in language teaching, Spanish, English, French, and Zapotec. She met Bruhula Intersexual in 2014, and one year later, she became a collaborator of the same organization. She has participated in various talks and events about intersex in Mexico, and her testimony entitled An Orchid in a Rose Garden was published on the website of Bruhula Intersexual. Thanks, Rick. Thank you so much, Steph. Okay, I will read my piece connection a little too free. The connection is a very essential element in human life. We all have the need to establish social connection with people. We have the need to be connected with friends, with family, with a partner, and most importantly, to be connected with ourselves. Sometimes it isn't easy at all to find the right way to connect our bodies with our hearts. Sometimes that connection can be hard to set, but easy to lose. Hard to find ourselves. Through the following lines, I want to tell you more about Frida, 
or Fui, a little girl who lived her childhood and adolescence trying to find out who she really was. Frida, yes, the prisoner of puberty and early menopause, this girl has two different faces and lives. On the first side, a typical person with a typical life in the eyes of others. On the other side, free, whom doctors find abnormal and that she cannot show others. Even though they've always lived in the same body, in the same small body, they didn't meet each other until adolescence. At the beginning, they didn't get along well at all. Each other and built a bridge that let them get connected, setting an unbreakable relationship. Through the following letter that Frida wrote to Free, I'll tell you more about them and the silence they had to keep. Hi, Free. It's Frida, yes. You know, we are the same person with the same body and the same heart, but different personalities, different strengths, different thoughts. Just remembered all this gone through to become who we are. We've never talked about it before, and I've never told you my feelings about it. So please sit down, because this may last longer than you think. I hope you enjoy reading these words I'm writing to you. When I was a little girl, I always wondered about who and what I really was. I knew I was children. I knew I looked different. And I was frequently told not to tell anyone about my genitals, my different genitals. All those things made me confused about me. The usual questions I used to ask myself were, am I a boy or a girl? Why do my genitals look different from the other girls? Why am I treated as a girl? If I look so different, if I look more like a boy, why do my parents not want anyone to know about my body? I didn't understand anything. I was confused and I got more and more confused as time passed. I wasn't connected with my body. I wasn't connected with you. I didn't know about your existence. Hiding in the shadows, in the deepest part of myself. While I was thinking that I was a peculiarity, that I was ugly, and that maybe I was a mistake of nature, you were trying to get my attention and tell me that you were part of those things I considered ugly. You were trying to tell me that you were there for me, that you are not a mistake. And Would make a great team together. I met you at the hospital when three doctors told me I was abnormal. When those doctors told me I was a hermaphrodite, they said I wasn't either a boy or a girl, but a freak of nature. They made me hate my body. They made me hate you. They made me hate myself. Myself. I didn't understand anything and then I tried to remove you. I wanted to be normal. I wanted to be like the other girls, but you never gave up. You refused to disappear. You were willing to be hurt. You were determined to survive. So little by little, I started to hear your voice. I started to get to know you and I realized that you expect of me. You had suffered so much living in the shadows, keeping your feelings quiet and repressing your voice. After some months getting to know each other, I realized I didn't hate you anymore. I realized I like you. I realized I actually loved you. 
I understood that we weren't abnormal as doctors had said to. We were completely normal. We are an awesome team. You are the best of me. I just want to say thank you, Fui. Thank you for never giving up. Thank you for all the struggle you've undergone, for being there for me when I need it, for your support, for being an important part of me. Thank you for everything. I'm best, Frida. Thank you so much. Thanks, Fri. You've also shared a really personal piece and it shows how you've, you know, over time grown to understand and love yourself. And you've done this in such a powerful way um, with this letter. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Yex Run. Yex Run is a member of the mainland Chinese diaspora, currently based in Singapore, and loves to write in English and Chinese. Hello. Um, yeah, I I wrote a short poem when when I was um been sick, um physically sick and meditating. So, um, poem's titled "Drawing Parallels." Part one on intersections. What happens when I draw two parallel lines? Looking ahead into the singular dimension, there is only one road. In reality, there was always a duality. My perspective, I just never saw the other road. When I realize I see the other road, reality becomes a paradox. One day I saw you between the parallel lines, there was just a tiny gap. You and I were just two sides of the same point. The paradox of how two intersects with one. We met each other at the intersection. That was where we found intersectionality in the realms of yin and yang. Part two, reflections. I look at myself in the mirror. I see my reflection and I reflect. At the end of the day, solitude is just you and I. Reconciliation. To you, my past and my inner child, before closing your eyes for the night, sing a song of lullaby. Don't be afraid of the dark. There is enlightenment in darkness. And there was nothing but peace between you and I, because we are one. Thank you. Thank you, x You shared with us such a reflective poem in three parts. And you know, one that really connects with your reflections on Chinese philosophies and intersex understandings in the Chinese language. So thank you. And it, it's been really lovely, you know, for me as well to meet you through this process and follow your um, engagement with um, poetry communities in Singapore and online. So thank you for that. Um, finally, we have a video recording, um, which I'll get Georgia to share. And if this doesn't come out well on the recording, I'll, I'll try and edit it in or share it alongside the launch video, but we'll see how it goes. Um, Lee, let me pull up. Um, Lee is an intersex person born in 1996. Lee is Zimbabwean and lives in the remote areas of Zimbabwe. His greatest passion is to write articles as well as poems, and he wishes to continue his education. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge the challenges for some of our contributors in, in joining us for this launch, given the difficulties, um, both in terms of time zones and also in accessing stable internet connections. So um, I'm really grateful Lee was still able to share um, and send through a recording for us. Thanks, Georgia. Hi, everyone. My name is Lee, and I'm an intersex person from Zimbabwe. 
I'm going to be reading you my poem. It's called How I Managed to Survive Disconnections as an Intersex Person. And I read, I grew up in the southern parts of Africa where being intersex is considered to be something that is not normal. And other ignorant people would boldly label you as a disabled person. For the past 26 years, I feel disconnected from family, friends, churchmates, and others to such an extent that I had to stop going to church because of the discriminatory eyes that people would look at me with. Waking up every day and preparing to go to school was the most painful nightmare because my thoughts would have already been ahead thinking of other how other peoples are going to treat me that day. One day I woke up and told myself that if I survived for 26 years with only a few individuals that are connected to me, then I can make it without those who chose to stay disconnected. I woke up and made that decision. Never to allow people with negative thoughts towards me to define me. Now I feel brave and better than how I was before. Those who remain connected to me keep on encouraging me to soldier on. I made it a point to value the little connections that I have rather than the disconnections. And that is what brought me to where I am today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lee. Thanks for sending through the recording. Um, and yeah, Lee, Lee also has a second piece in issue three, a poem, which is well worth seeing as well. Um, okay, so now we've heard some of the pieces in issue three, and I'm going to pass over to Georgia Andrews, our stakeholder manager, who's been invaluable in helping bring this project together. Um, and it really has been just so, so helpful to help um, have you bounce ideas off and support the project the whole way along. Thanks, Roger. Over to you. Thanks, Steph. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa. Uh, hello, everybody from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, my name's Georgia, and it's been a total pleasure to work alongside Steph and the youth and I team this year as we've brought together the stories of many young intersex people from across the world. I've been thinking this week about the impacts for me on a very personal level and engaging in this work. And I remember when I first came out as intersex and knew very few intersex young people. And I have seen that Youth and I, both my engagement in Youth and I issue two, as well as this issue, has allowed other young intersex people from across the planet to share their stories for the first time, to connect with other intersex people and to hear stories like theirs. So I just want to commend all of the contributors this year. It's been lovely to hear your stories from Africa to Australia to the Canary Islands. This publication is so unique in the sense that we have people from all across the globe contributing in their own language and sharing their beautiful stories. And I really encourage you all when issue three is made available to please share it with your friends. The more voices that we can share, the more young people we will have who can come out and feel welcome to celebrate their stories. Kia ora, thank you. Absolutely agree. Thank you, Georgia. I'm gonna also now pass over to Gabe Fulpi who designed the really beautiful um, and intimate front cover image. Hi everyone. Um, first off, um, I'm joining from Nunawal Nambri country here in Canberra. Uh, incredibly privileged to uh, both live and work on Nunawal Nambri country, but also to be involved with this incredible piece of work and project. Uh, I actually had work and pieces in both issue one and two, so it was really nice to take a step back and to give space in issue three for all of this being really incredible and diverse, um, beautiful creative writing from everyone and um, just hearing everyone's stories, it's always sort of surprised me. Um, when I first sort of started meeting other intersex people, I was thrown into a room of like 30 plus other people. Uh, and that for me was very much the deep end and very overwhelming. But um, what you really get from all the stories in Youth and I, one, two, and now three, uh, is just how much in common we have with one another and that the shared experiences, um, the differences where they are, 
um, but just that building of connection, which is why I'm really excited that the theme was that connection uh, for this issue. Um, and I really just wanted something just small and intimate. Um, so paired it back, just two hands reaching out to one another. Um, I encourage everyone to reach out to other people around you, to reach out to other intersex people, uh, and for Youth and I to be that bridge to reach out to other people more broadly. I do a lot of work in communities and schools and getting Youth and I into the schools, even in Canberra, um, where it can have so much impact for our young people. Um, just really incredible project, and I really thank all of the contributors, um, all of the translators, all of the people doing editing, everyone that's been involved in this process for bringing together such an incredible piece of work. Um, I'm just so happy to see how much it's grown um, from this little project that started in Canberra to this beautiful uh, globe-crossing piece of work, so thank you everyone. Thanks so much for your reflections, Gabe, it's so true. It is so nice to see um, and get so many more people involved over the issues. Um, and of course, I also want to acknowledge um, our graphic designer for this issue, but also issue two, Gabby Niemeyer. Um, and as you can see, Gabby has done a really incredible job at making all of the pieces stand out um, individually, but also flow together beautifully as a whole. Um, so thanks so much, Gabby. I know how much attention you've put towards, you know, making each piece look amazing. And I think that's really, reflected in the final book. Yeah, thank you. Actually, it's funny, you work so much on it and you don't really have so much time to read every, all the entries and, you know, just having this set up and the, the author's reading, just, oh, my God, the story is just really moving me. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, it's definitely a different experience than reading it very quickly and making sure everything's right to actually hearing it from um, the authors. So um, yeah, it's just wonderful. So <laughs> thanks for letting me do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I think that's so right. Just hearing people read their entries just gives it so much more life, um, which I really appreciate. Um, well, this has been really lovely. Um, it's been, so nice to hear from some of our wonderful contributors on the Youth and I team. Um, so once this video is live, issue three will be available um, online for free and in print for roughly 20 Australian dollars. Um, and if you go to our website, youthandi.org, you can find out then where you can purchase a copy. Um, and if you sign up to our mailing list, um, it will also let you know about further updates. Um, and also if you are having trouble accessing in print copies please let us know and we will try our best to to see if we can help it it's not really clear to me often like which regions of the world can access it so um if you just let us know we'll try to send through some copies um okay well thank you everyone for attending and congratulations on a really successful issue three thanks congratulations <laughs>